everyone, this is Tom from Burmy Bank. There's a lot of videos out there uh, showing you how to set up a workbench. And some of them are pretty good, and others aren't so good. But most of them really are kind of one-sided. They, they just tell you how to show you how to set up a worm bin. They don't explain why you're doing what you're doing or actually explain the different options, uh, different ways that you could possibly set up a worm bin. So what I'm going to do is make a basically a seven-part series, uh, maybe eight depending on how things go, and kind of take you through each of the areas one at a time and go in depth in the, each of the areas that are really important if you're going to set up a successful vermicomposting system. So the first video is going to be this one, which is just going to be a general overview of what I'm going to be covering in the series. Uh, the rest of the videos, I'll probably do one on containers. Uh, what type of container you want to put your worms into, whether it's a rubber tote or a fabric uh, continuous flow system like the Vermi bag. The next series will probably be on bedding. I can spend a whole video very easily uh, explaining bedding. Anybody that's watched any of my videos knows that I do a pre-composted, moistened bedding. Uh, I really advocate it, and the worms really do well with it. Then there'll be another one on moisture, uh, controlling moisture, another critical point in your system. You get too much of it, you're in trouble. You don't have enough of it, you're in trouble. I'm going to do one on worms, uh, different types of worms. I mean, I only normally deal with three types here, but it's just important to know that there are differences between the worms. And then harvest. I mean, the systems we talked about before, how they differ, uh, the types of harvesting systems, uh, the amount of work that goes into the harvest, and then feeding. I, I see questions all the time on uh, the different forums and stuff about how much a person should feed. And, and there's not a straight answer for any of these. It really depends on the system you have, uh, the type of container you have, uh, the bedding you're using, the types of worms you have. Uh, all those things play in. So there's not just a simple answer, yeah, half a pound per or a worm can eat a half of its body weight every day, because that's just not really true. Uh, it depends on a lot of different factors. So, you want to set up a worm bin. Uh, how are you going to do it? I mean, should you just go online, order a whole bunch of worms, run down to Walmart, pick up a rubber tote, get them all together, throw them in there, and see how it goes? A lot of people do that, and you're just asking for a disaster wake up in the middle of the night and the two pounds of worms you put in your bin, a pound and a half of them running across the living room floor. What are you expecting from this system? I mean, there's a, there's a lot of different reasons why people get into vermicomposting. Are you doing this for the castings, for your own use that you're going to use in your garden, on your shrubs? Or are you looking to do this for castings that maybe you want to sell? Uh, make a little bit of extra money. Maybe you're just doing it to get fishing worms. Another reason a lot of people do it. Or maybe you want to do it for you can sell some of these composting worms to other people. And maybe you're just wanting to do a little bit of recycling. Do your part. You're not into gardening at all, but you have all this waste material that you're throwing in the garbage. You're feeling guilty like I do. So you want to do some good with it. You throw it into the worm bin, make some dirt out of it, you know, make something good out of something we're going to throw away. Or maybe you want to ha you have kids and you want to teach them or you want to take a system to school to teach other people about vermicomposting. So each one of those reasons basically has a different attack, a different type of system that you would probably get in order to do that. Now another factor you have to consider on this is where do you live? Do you live in a dry area or do you live in a humid area? Do you live somewhere where it gets cold in the winter or really, really hot in the summer or both? Do you live in the country? Do you live in a city? Do you live in a house? Do you live in an apartment? All those factors have to be considered too because that's going to direct you into the type of system you want to use. And then where are you going to put the system? If you're going to put the system outside, 
it's another, a different type system. If you're going to put the system in your garage, a lot of different systems can go in there. Or if you want to put the system inside your house. Another factor is how much time do you actually want to spend working on this system. Uh, some systems require a little bit more time than others. Some are a little bit more forgiving than others. So if you're dedicated and you think you're going to go ahead and spend a little bit of time every week, that's all it really takes is once a week, maybe five, ten minutes. As long as you're diligent on that, uh, you shouldn't have too much trouble with most of the systems. And how many castings are you expecting to produce? I mean, do you need a gallon a month or do you need five gallons a month? What's your family size? Family of one? Family of four? Family of eight? The bigger your family is, of course, the more scraps and stuff you're going to produce and it'd be easier to maintain a system. If you get a big system and you don't produce uh, too much organic waste material, you're going to have trouble finding waste material unless you have a readily available supply somewhere. Uh, and then just the sheer volume of any system. Uh, if you want a system that's more stable, the more volume that's in a system, the more stable the system is going to be. If you have a tiny little container, any type of environmental changes, a temperature, or humidity, or whatever, will affect that small container very quickly. If you have a much larger volume, it'll take a lot longer. The system will be able to hold the temperature, the humidity, the moisture, whatever it happens to be, just because of the sheer mass of the system. And your food sources. Now, like I said before, it depends whether you live in the city or the country. If you live in the country, you might have horse manure, cow manure that's pretty composted and stuff readily available. You're more than likely, if you're in a city, you're not going to have that. So the food source that you're going to select for your main food source can vary drastically. Where I live, I don't have horse manure or cow manure readily available to me, but I do have a lot of vegetable scraps. So that's what I concentrate on. If you live somewhere where, again, they had horses or cows somewhere, I'd probably concentrate on that. But there's advantages and disadvantages to both of those as well. If you bring outside material, whether it be leaves, horse manure, cow manure, or something, and use them in your systems, your systems are going to have a lot more other bugs in them too, because there's a lot of natural decomposters that are in this manure and stuff, so you're going to be introducing them into your system that you're going to be putting inside your house, if you put it in your house. Maybe you put it outside. Whereas if you're using vegetable scraps, then you're not going to introduce those uh, critters and stuff nearly as much. You'll still get some in here. It's inevitable. You're always going to get some in there. But you won't get nearly as many. Now, if you're looking to sell the castings to other people, that's going to dictate a little bit on what you feed the worms. Because if you're feeding your worms just scraps, vegetable scraps and stuff that you get from some garden, you're going to end up with a lot of seeds in it. And people that are buying castings from you, they don't want tomatoes and squash and all these uh, garden plants, even though they're not weeds. They don't want them sprouting up in a garden. So what you feed your system is going to be totally different. You're going to end up feeding them other material like grains, uh, worm chow or something like that. The same thing if you want really fat worms for fishing. Uh, you can still feed them vegetable scraps, but you're going to probably want to supplement it with some, uh, like worm chow. I use bird seed and I grind it up. It's basically the same thing and it works really well. And if you're using the castings yourself, it doesn't really matter. And that, that's what I normally do, or I give my castings away. And I always tell people that when you use these castings, you're probably going to have some tomatoes and maybe a squash or two or pumpkins or something sprouting up. I normally sift my castings, so most of the larger seeds are sifted out, but it's inevitable that I'll have a lot of uh, tomatoes and stuff come up. They're very simple to pull out, but uh, you're going to get them in the castings. So that's really the general overview of what I'm going to try and do on this series. I'm going to try and keep the videos somewhat short. I know they'll get longer. Uh, I tend to ramble on a little bit more, and I think of something else I want to talk about. but. Uh, each of the other videos, I'll go in depth into each of those areas I talked about. The next one, I may try and work on it today, I'm going to go into containers. I'm going to show you the different types of containers uh, that you can use. 
try and you know point out some of the advantages and disadvantages uh, to the different systems that you can possibly uh, use. Now, of course, I'm going to be somewhat biased towards Vermi bag, but uh, or not just Vermi bag, but continuous flow through systems in general, especially the fabric ones. Uh, I, I think they're the best system out there. And if you get on the internet and, uh, forums and stuff and talk to people, I think a lot of people will agree with you uh, on that, or agree with me on that. Uh, they're great systems. But cost is a factor, of course. And they definitely cost a lot more than a Rubbermaid tub or something you have down in your garage that you can set up for a, a simple system. But the main thing is you really need to do a little bit of research before you go out and buy some more. Don't get on the internet and go buy some worms, get a container and put it together. Uh, think about it, prepare for it, and I'll guarantee you if you follow through the way I show you through this series that you can set up a successful vermicomposting system and maintain it by basically working on it, you know, at the most 10 minutes a week. So, that's all I have for today. This is Tom from Vermibag. Until next time. Thank you.